aubergine, eggplant, courgette, the one that Americans call it. Why are they called different things? You might find out on I Don't Know About That with Jim Jeffries. I don't know any of those. I know uh, eggplant. Aubergine and eggplants are the Aubergine, same yeah. thing. I know of it. And cor- cor- courgette and zucchini. We call them zucchinis. Mm. You, oh, no, they call them your kids. You say them courgettes. Call them you call them zucchinis. Who, who's they? The Brits and Australians call Short them zucchinis. Cats. You guys are weird. No, we call them, we call them courgettes. No, yeah. the British call them courgettes. I think Australia calls them zucchinis. It's been so long. You know which one, you guys, <laughs> doesn't make sense to me in Australia is capsicum. Capsicum. You know that's a bell pepper? Yeah. yeah, bell peppers. Because pepper means yeah, but, hot. But yeah, but you shorten everything in Australia. You make a little I or an E yeah, why or wouldn't a Y it be cappies? on the end. Yeah, it's you a- got to get yourself a cappy, yeah. man. Yeah. On, your, on your schnitzel. Get a cappy. <laughs> get capsicum. a cappy with your zookies and your, your eggies. Eggie plants. zippity doo day. Yeah, no, it's so everyone now. The moist tour, the moist tour is coming. The moist tour. A lot of people have been asking why did I call it the moist tour? Because I think that tour names are stupid. And I thought, you know, you say the word cunt so much in your career that it's lost all meaning. And I Googled what's the most offensive word in the English language? Number one, moist. And you can put it on a poster. (laughs) So I put it on there. Now, if you don't like more than motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, it's the number one word that upsets people. Now, If you don't like the word moist, um, don't worry about it. I don't have any jokes uh, regarding the word moist. I'm not going to say the word moist. There's a small chance there will be a backdrop that says the word moist in large letters. (laughs) A small or a large chance? A a small chance is a large backdrop. (laughs) You shouldn't even have the words. You should just have like a wet towel, like a a moist. Yeah, I'm just going to have a moist All of the chairs are lightly soaked. (laughs) The the background is going to be cake. And like damp towels mm-hmm. and uh, women who slightly like me. Yeah, and when, and when when they're walking into the theater, it'll like squish a little. Like, <laughs> oh, God. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the whole place is gonna feel like New Orleans a year after Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, to any of our people yeah. out there in Hurricane Katrina, was a ter- <laughs> in Hurricane Katrina. I know it was New Orleans. Hurricane Katrina was the thing that. Did, sorry about what happened. It hit Florida as well. <laughs> to say now. Oh, it hit Florida. Yeah. So to all the people at New Orleans, sorry what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Right. What do you got for us, Jack? We're going to revisit the game. You don't know Jack. Where I ask personal questions about myself to see if anybody knows anything about me. Oh. Mm. What you up? don't know Jack. Last time, I think I got a little bit too specific, so I went a little broader this time. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> Were you sad about how little we knew about you? Yes. Yeah, but you can't ask he, us the first place like, you He's like, what was drunk. my birth weight? And we're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what your birth weight is. I don't know my birth weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Why would like I know your birth weight? Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, so our three categories a day. First one is who said it, which were insults that said to me, and you guys have to pick who said it. Is Everyone it? in the schoolyard. <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> Everyone at and work. Then, <laughs> and then wait, injuries. Wait, 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 wait. Is this the same board? It looks a little jankier. It's the same board, just different okay. categories. Okay, 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 okay. And then the last one are drink orders. Drink orders. These are okay, orders now, of drinks? Now, now, you I, have the four. Wait, wait, what, what are drink orders? Before we talk about this. Uh, you'll know when the questions come. <laughs> okay, Jack had a big night out this week, and he said, because uh, I was going to do a show, and sometimes Jack comes along to my shows, <laughs> and he goes, oh, I can't go out. I've got a big night out, right? Now, a young man of his age, you think you'd be going where the pussy is. Or you'd be hanging out with your friends in some type of rock club, listening to some tunes, seeing a band or it's something close, like that. Right? Close to that. But Jack and his friends all go in a group to the Universal City Walk, Margaritaville. Mm-hmm. It just reopened? Oh, yeah, they've been waiting. They've been waiting. We told the waiter that, and he gave us a discount. It was awesome. And they give you a blender of drinks, he tells me. Yeah. Blender of drinks. Mm-hmm. On Sunday at the barbecue, I go, how was Margaritaville? He goes, good, we got so drunk. <laughs> he goes, good, we got so drunk. And he's, and he's like, he's like, uh, he's, 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 I'm like, well, is there any women there? Not my age. <laughs> Not my age. Yeah. They're all parrot heads. They're all retired. <laughs> old, old parrot heads. <laughs> yeah, but if they, even if you went to one that was sort of like downtown or something like that, the one at Universal City Walk has got to be just. I don't think there's young women hanging out at Margarita. Bar. I Look, know, but just uh, couples in uh, Harry <laughs> Potter outfits. <laughs> I must say, there was an hour wait for Margaritaville. They only you had about went 10 to Margaritaville and waited an hour wait, wait, for it? Wait Look, a minute. You Universal young, City Walk, you could kill so much time I'll, I'll tell you something that women like. I don't know why they like it, but they love it. If you can jump a queue and get into a restaurant quicker or get into a nightclub when everyone's lined up, and that's at a nice place. If you can't jump the queue at Margaritaville. We, I, 
I was able to get us in 20 minutes earlier, but it was a party of 12, so it was difficult. Oh, no, no, that's good. How did you get you in 20 minutes? Did you you, you this I podcast? came back, early, I came yeah. back earlier, <laughs> no, no, like because, 20 minutes early, and they're like, oh, is this the 12th party? Go, yeah, all right, you guys can come. Because, we, like, right. because we were working for NBC on the NBC part, that never happened in the end, but, uh, you know, all good. NBC were very nice to us while we were there and everything. Uh, NBC gave me and Jack, uh, we had we had on-site passes. Your proper we, badges. We had parking things that go on your room, mm-hmm. Mary, that oh, were yeah. all sparkly and embossed and all that type of stuff. They had uh, holograms on them to make sure they weren't fake. And Jack texts me when he gets to Margaritaville, and this was the text. Yeah, those parking passes no longer work. <laughs> <laughs> Found out the hard way. Because you could get free employee parking at the theme park. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we went in. I was like, I don't know. And then the, the entrance looked wrong. I was like, this is going to be bad. It doesn't work. And then there's a line of employees trying to get to work. And luckily, a guy who operates the Jurassic World ride came up behind us and goes, what's wrong, guys? He goes, the pass isn't working. He goes, no worries, and buzzes us in. So we still got in for free. But Okay, so oh. you don't know Jack. Let's play this yeah. game here. That was a good right, story. Forrest, you're on the <laughs> yeah. 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 The answer is Margaritaville. Yeah. Oh. Uh, who said it for 600? Uh, you, who said it for 600? Okay. Who said, I personally liked when you looked like a lesbian? Uh, Kelly. Me. That's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kelly Wait, I forgot that. we have to hang. Bang, That's 600 bu- points for you. We have to buzz in by banging the table? Okay. Okay. Is that how Kelly we buzz in? Floor? Yep. You're going to scare uh, Arnie the whole time. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going to go drink orders for 600. Okay. Drink orders for 600. What drink does Jack drink often that always makes him have diarrhea? What is milk? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Jim, you have the floor? I'm going to go injuries for 600. Injuries for 600. Are you keeping score of how much money you guys need to remember? Uh, I got I got 400 bucks. So you got 600. 600. 600. I'm buzzing in. Okay, what pro tracks knows I'm not trying to bang the table. It's bothering. All of Arnie's training is out the window. Sorry. That's okay. You buzzed in. What broke? Oh, I thought this was who. What, what? broke Jack's nose in second grade? Oh, his confidence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nope. Okay. I know the answer. I know the answer. answer. All the other kids. No. 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 His Any mother. Other? No. Uh-huh. Anybody else? Uh-huh. Uh, a pedophile's no. dick. No. <laughs> no. None of these happen. You guys are losing all your money. <laughs> you guys are like negative a million at this point. That's why I'm not guessing. It was a baseball. A baseball. A baseball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Jack. Um, like, I, the, you I know what you should have done is you should have waited for the who said it category to say what we say now. <laughs> like, number 400 should be like, who said a pedophile's dick broke my nose? Next time we do this game, we'll pull all the insults from this and put it back in. Okay. It's still Jim's. Yeah, it's just, Jim oh, still yeah, has to yeah, board. Yeah, I don't know how many points you've lost at this I'm point. I'm minus a lot, but, but negative for, 600. I had some good answers, though. <laughs> uh, I would go injuries for 600. We, already did, we just did that oh, one. Injuries for 400. Okay, injuries for Oh, daily double. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to gamble it all. I'm going to gamble it all. Okay, gamble you it all. You don't have anything. You're negative. Yeah, but I'm going to $2,000. Okay. Okay, why did Jack have to have a colonoscopy <laughs> at 12? I like how yeah. these are your broader questions. Yeah. The I've other ones definitely were too mentioned specific. this one a lot. I've okay. mentioned this one a lot. Pedophile's dick. Mm. No. <laughs> I think he swallowed a Lego. That, he did call it a col- yeah. colonoscopy. No, no, no. So, so, so what happened? You had a col- colonoscopy. We're supposed to be answering. And so, no, no. So you would have, yeah, I think Lego is a good good bet. I think, I think, uh, <laughs> no, I'm going to think premature uh, hemorrhoids. No. Mm. Kelly, did you have any? No. No? I was going to I it's had a daily a, double. It's only Jim can answer. Oh, okay. Uh, I had a parasite. Oh, yeah. I do remember that. I almost died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember you yeah. talking about that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I threw up for six months straight because yeah, of a parasite. You've mentioned that at least yeah, yeah. 4,000 yeah, yeah. times. Well, also, it's, also it's the most company he's ever had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Academy Award well, winner. We keep getting the questions wrong, but uh, Jim, I guess, still gets to keep going. Uh, who said for $200? Okay. Who said, Jack hasn't gained any knowledge from working on the show. The only thing he's gained is weight. Uh, that would be Sounds me. Sounds like Jim. That's yeah. correct. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. You got to rank. Doesn't it have to be in the form just, of a question? I guess, oh yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Who is Jim? Uh, Being, what is me? <laughs> <laughs> who is me? Correct. <laughs> who am I? <laughs> All right, Jimmy, you have the board? I'm guessing I'm $400. I don't, I, don't, I, don't remember, I don't remember saying that to Jack. I just knew it was my crazy. Yeah, yeah. it definitely sounds like something you I said. remember you said, said it. Who said it $600? No, we already did Who said it $400? Okay, ding, who, ding, who ding, said it? Ding, Jim. Ding, ding. Jim, no, Jim me, Forrest. What is Forrest? What is Forrest? What is Forrest? Ding, ding, ding. What's your answer? It's me. That's correct. Forrest always says, everyone hates you. Yeah, yeah. I say that to everyone now. I say that to everyone. If Forrest says something nasty and there's no one in the room to hear it, does it really make a sound? Yes. Okay, so we have Forrest, you have the board. There's injuries for 200 and drink orders for 200. Drink orders for 200. Drink orders for 200. 200? Yeah, 400. 
Four hundred. Okay, here we go. What's Jack's go-to dang, alcohol? Dang, dang, okay. Oh, uh, hand uh, Screwdriver. That's so correct. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say Kelly's margarita, but Kelly, that's your fault. Yeah, that's your fault. I like but I didn't, I didn't want to do a ding. I thought I we were just going like, to say I it like, out. I like a screwdriver, too. Drink orders for 200 Okay, drink orders for 200 What's Jack's Starbucks ding. order? Ooh, okay. Puppuccino. <laughs> What's in a puppuccino? No, no, no. It's just ding, 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 ding. Cake pop. No. <laughs> ding. Jack doesn't drink Starbucks. It, it, hot chocolate. Ding. Hot chocolate. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> Hot chocolate and screwdrivers. Yeah, that's basically what I meant. That's Jack's biography. Coffee. Hot chocolate and screwdrivers. <laughs> uh, what? Well, there's only one left. Only one right? left. Uh, I guess it goes to Forrest. Uh, do you want to do injuries for two hundred? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Uh, how did Jack accidentally slit his wrist when he was three? <laughs> 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 ding, <laughs> ding, ding, it wasn't an accident. Depressed. <laughs> oh, you over dinged his ding. ding. Same, same answer. Okay, ding. no, both di ding. <laughs> Pedophile's dick. No, pedophile's dick involved. Wow. I was trying to get a VHS out of a VHS case and slit. My wrist by accident. Uh, that's what the oldest the one. Fuck? Bit, like, uh, <laughs> you, you cut your wrist on a on a blockbuster <laughs> fucking case, and you didn't yeah, make the did. documentary. Yeah, the paramedics <laughs> game was horrible. I almost <laughs> died. The paramedics game, and then like they showed up, and then like uh, the, the, your mother went. He did rewind it though. <laughs> <laughs> he was such a good wow. Boy. So we know this nothing about you. Too. The final jack off. Yay. Final Yay. Jack off. This is where you can wager all the money. Pretty much, this is whoever gets this one right. Yeah, wins they, it all. I'd all like right. to go all in there. Now basically, please. you're gonna have some time to think, okay? Mm, okay. Now, because right after this podcast, I'm getting my hair cut. So you guys, this is your last chance to have your oh. greatest Dave Grohl insult. And so I'll give you some time to think. Luis is gonna help me judge who the oh. winner is. Oh, okay, okay. Do 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 do. I think we got it. Yeah, okay, we got, okay, it. We got it. Yeah. All right, uh, Jim, would you like to begin? No, I haven't got one yet. Okay, Kelly, would you like to begin? Okay, um, you look like if someone tried to describe Dave Grohl to the police. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Luis, did you like that one? Yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty good. Right, pretty good. <laughs> I quite enjoyed that. Forrest? Dave Grohl hates you. <laughs> That's it. I like Kelly ones. I'm just figuring it out. It's very good. Because <laughs> <laughs> the sketch drugs are never yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Luis, what do you think of that one? I mean, I enjoyed it, but, you know, Kelly, yeah. Kelly's up top. Kelly's up top. If Dave Grohl thought he looked like you, he'd cut himself with a video case. <laughs> <laughs> Luis? Ah, oh, shit. That's a good These one. Are good. These are good. Do we have to have a Dave Grohl off? Is, is that a no, thing? No, it we, is no, now. We, no, we don't. Vote in we, the comments. Vote no. in the comments. <laughs> no, no, we, we have to get to the ads. Okay, we'll go to ads. <laughs> Kelly wins. <laughs> <laughs> Time for ads. Honey, do, 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 do. we're going shopping. Here we are. It's Honey. Honey, I, I use the Honey app. They also support, they, they sponsor the Clippers. So I like the Clippers. But the, the Honey app, it's good. You put it on your phone. We all shop online, right? All of us, except for my dad, who we all know doesn't, doesn't shop online. And we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and apply, applies the best one and finds it for your cart. Honey supports over oh, probably 300 stores or something. <laughs> 30,000 stores. 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech and game, gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery, but a cross promotion. And maybe Honey will work with it. Who knows? Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites and then check out the Honey button drops. Boom. All you have to do is click, apply coupons. You apply coupons, wait a few seconds, and Honey searches all the coupons, coupons to find the best one for that site. If Honey has a working coupon, you just watch the prices drop. You don't have to do anything else. Honey has saved me a lot of money. I buy cat food with it. I buy me cat food and the Honey coupon comes down, boom, discounts. If you don't already have Honey, you, you, you could be straight up missing out on savings and it's literally free to install in seconds. See, normally I say, go and put this code in and all that type of stuff, you know, and you'll get the savings. You'll get the savings just by getting Honey. But... There is a code. And by getting it, you'll be supporting this podcast because I never recommend anything that I don't use myself. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash IDK. That's joinhoney.com slash IDK. Thank you, Honey. Thank you for supporting the podcast. This summer, it's been easier than ever to drop our personal care routines, but with your personalized grooming kit, 
from Hawthorne, it's easy to stay on track. Hawthorne is a premier grooming brand that tailors your personal care routine with, to your unique profile. First, you take the quiz. Not a hard quiz. Don't, don't worry. I don't like taking quizzes. You always find out. Am I a, a Monica or a Rachel? Turns out I'm a Phoebe. Uh, so you take the quiz. They ask you things like, what type of skin I have? How often do I shave? It was really simple. Uh, girly and once a week. <laughs> At the end, I got an essential bundle with all the products tailored to my body type and lifestyle. The products I got included a deodorant, lotion, the chapstick. The lotion was fantastic. I'm, I'm not much of a chapstick guy. I feel like I, my lips become dependent, but other people like them. But the lotion I'm using every day. Hawthorne takes the risk out of shopping for personal care by giving you free shipping to of, of your orders and returns. With their subscription options, Personalised to your usage, Hawthorne makes sure you never run out of your essentials. Life is complicated. Hawthorne keeps it simple with a short study back quiz that matches you with your perfect grooming kit. Looking, looking your best has never been easier. Try Hawthorne's quiz today and get started on your personal self-care routine by going to hawthorne.com. Hawthorne.co. Oh, there's no com. Hawthorne.co and use the promo code IDK to get 10% off your first port purchase. That's Hawthorne. H A W T H O R N E dot C O. Use promo code IDK. Hawthorne.co. Use promo code IDK. All right. Now let's introduce our guest, Andrew Chessworth. And now it's time to play Yes No, Yes No, Yes No, Yes No, Judging a Book by Its Cover. Mm. G'day, Andrew. <laughs> Thanks for being on the podcast, mate. Uh, now I'm going to guess what you do. It's the most undescript room I have ever seen in my entire life. It's just a stripy wall and a bit of paper in the corner. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say that you're an expert at staples and you're in middle management. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Staples episode. Staples. All right. Okay. Not, not, not the actual. Sta it's just oh. staples. The store. Oh, just oh, yeah, yeah. the store. Yeah. Anything. Of course. What's no. an aisle six, Jim? Oh, that's printers. Oh, okay. <laughs> But he there. was confident as hell. <laughs> the rest of it's paper, and then there's one aisle of actual yeah. staples. Okay. Um, that is not correct. No. Okay, so, uh, Andrew. Ask him some questions. Uh, Andrew, uh, you, I, I've, I've been told that you went to uh, school with Kelly, so I'm going to think that it's not something in the academic pursuits. <laughs> um, uh, are, are, are you related to sport? Is this a sporting um, thing that you do? No, but my brother is a physical therapist. Right. Yeah. right. Mm, we should have him on. Yeah. There you go. That would be a real good podcast. <laughs> um, is it? Is it uh, an intellectual endeavor? Yes. Okay. Uh, is it uh, about history? Not really. No, I've been doing very good. There at may it. be some history I've involved been, in the episode. We might ask not. you some yeah. history about the subject. About the subject. Yeah. yeah maybe. Um, it, um, is it related to uh, <laughs> works of fiction? Yes. Okay. Are you an expert in Superman? I know a little about Superman. <laughs> That's not what no, this is about. Well, why did you guess though. Superman? Because I'd love to do an episode on Superman. Okay, I write that down, Jack. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> Superman. I love Superman. No one could beat him. What Andrew is here to talk about today, you have been paid for, but it's not your main profession. Oh, you're a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> You've been paid for sex? Yeah, well. Some people in my profession would say possibly yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so it, it's you've been paid for this not too far in the past, and you'd like to do more of it. Oh, uh, uh, a rebate for getting solar panels. <laughs> what? You That's do the more only other paycheck I've had since I started here. So I've done a bit of uh, acting. Mm -hmm. sort Almost. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not my forte. In what, like genre, musical theaters mm -hmm. and opera. No, mm -hmm. no, recently. Oh, that I've been paid for recently. Yeah, acting last couple I years. Acting that I've done in the last couple voice of years. Work. Oh, voiceover. Animation. Animation. Andrew animation. Jesworth is here to talk animation. about Animation. I'm, I'm in an animated film that I haven't seen yet called yeah. Extinct, which the trailer's out, but I haven't seen it. And it keeps on saying it's coming out. I'm looking forward to that. Me and Ken John's in it. And yeah. I, 
I think like um, Adam Devine. Adam Devine's in it. Um, yeah, uh, I forget who else is in it now, but a lot of big names. What's the name? Uh, Rachel Bloom. Rachel Bloom, the very funny lady out of um, uh, Shit's Creek and all, all the the Christopher oh, Catherine Guest. O'Hara. Catherine O'Hara yeah. is in it. Oh. So you know what I mean. It's, I love her. I'll have to see the movie. <laughs> so you're gonna know everything about animation. I, I then. love saying I've acted with those people. I've never met them. It's a voiceover. <laughs> you do it in a room. So so are you an animator, Andrew? Uh, well, let me introduce him properly. Andrew Chesworth was nominated for an Oscar for the animated short film One Small Step. He was an animator for Disney on Frozen, Zootopia, Moana, Big Hero 6, Wreck-It Ralph, Feast, Get a Horse, Inner Workings, and Olaf's Frozen Adventure. Woo. Andrew taught fourth-year character animation at Cal Arts. He has been an instructor for the online CG animation school Anim Squad. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Since 2014. Currently, Andrew is employed at Netflix as a character design supervisor on My Dad, the Bounty Hunter. And he is also directing and producing his passion, passion project, the Brave Locomotive through Patreon. If you can tell us a little bit more about that or anything else you'd like to tell us, then please feel free to. Yeah, thank you so much for the intro and for having me here. Um, yeah, The Brave Locomotive is a short film I started before I was hired at Disney as a sort of audition piece to get into Disney. And then they hired me before I finished it. And then when I was working on those feature films you listed, the job was so intensive that I shelved the project and said, maybe at a later date. And then when the pandemic hit, I thought this is as good a time as any to finish that film, but I've got new perspective on maybe how I would approach it and yeah. finish it differently. It's a shame you haven't worked on any huge movies though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, well, but so, so, What's Frozen? Yeah, fro yeah Frozen. <laughs> so my, my dad, the bounty hunter, is this an animated thing you're doing for Netflix right now? It is, yeah. It, I was invited to join the project by the showrunners, Everett Downing, who won the Oscar for a short called Hair Love last year, and Patrick Harpin, who was a story artist at Sony, who got to know Ev, and they jammed on this idea together and brought it to Netflix. Uh, and I was lucky enough to be a part of it just because they had seen my work on a film called Klaus, so they wanted some help um, developing the characters in 2D form before they get created in 3D. You oh know, yeah, he did Klaus too. We loved that. That's like the new Christmas movie from a couple of years ago on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, 2019. It was so a hand good. film. You know what sounds more like an animated film than My Dad the Bounty Hunter? Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, right? that, does yeah. Sit. that sounds like an animated film. Dog <laughs> the Bounty Hunter. It's a dog that's my, a bounty hunter. My dog, <laughs> my dog, the, my dog bounty the Bounty Hunter. hunter. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so pitch that. <laughs> <laughs> Get on that. Um, all right. So we're going to ask Jim some questions about animation and, and see what he knows or thinks he knows. And then after that, you're going to grade him zero through 10, 10 being the best on his accuracy of these, this subject. And then Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. If you score 21 through 30 total, Winnie the Pooh, mm. 11 through 20, <laughs> Poo poo platter, <laughs> zero through ten pile of poo poo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be that, that. Was, that. Was my child's favorite joke when he was a kid. Like, <laughs> why was Piglet looking in the toilet? Uh, he was looking for yeah. poo. But you didn't put one of them as poo on a stick. Poo on a stick. Mm. That was going to be the name of the tour, everyone. Yeah. We settled on moist. All right, we'll change 11 through 20 to poo on a stick. <laughs> okay, poo, yeah. poo, on, a poo stick. on a stick. My agents just went, what? I went, <laughs> poo on a stick. No, Jim, Jim really pitched, at Andrew, that we were just talking about Jim's upcoming tour as a, a stand-up. And he actually did pitch Poo on a Stick as the name of the tour. Yeah. It's a real thing. I just love that they were like, no, we don't want to do Son of a Carpenter, but yeah. Moist I, is I fine. I wanted to call it Son of a Carpenter. They said it was too boring. And then I went, all right, I got something for you. Poo on a Stick. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they went, no. And then when they settled on Moist and they went, really, no. And I go, let it sit with you for a while. <laughs> and then I go, did you feel uncomfortable? They go, we did. I go, but did you remember it? And they go, we did. And so Moist it is. All right. Okay. So animation, let's go. Um, just briefly, Jim. Yeah. And how does animation work? And well, what it is is you do it like the old school animation is you do a drawing and then you do the drawing like stop motion animation. You do the drawing slightly different and then you can flick through the book and it looks like the characters are moving. Mm -hmm. And then someone does a voiceover over the top and that's how you get an animated film up and running. Now they do most of it with computers, I imagine, but you'd still have to have people sketch out the drawings on how the characters are meant to look, et cetera. All right. What, what does the word animation mean? Um, animation, mation, animation, mation would mean movement. Anime would mean draw. Uh, uh, I would say, um, drawing movement. Mm -hmm. What is persistence of vision? What does that refer to? Um, that's when, uh, like Stevie Wonder really tries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. I thought about this during the pandemic. I got. The lady at the bank today, I went down to the bank today and they still make you wear the masks, of course, it's the bank. She's deaf, the poor thing. 
She, she her whole life is lip reading, and I'm there going, "I like the customer's check," and she's just like, "I've been fucked over for a year." <laughs> It's not yeah. like we've all learned sign language to fucking coexist with these people. And the yeah. pandemic, it's really hurting the deaf more than anyone. Side note, next question. Yeah, maybe she doesn't <laughs> even know that it's happening. Who would have told her? Like, <laughs> what's in all these people wearing masks? Uh, all animation is made up of blank. Um, of uh, magic. Okay. No, no, it's all made up of moving characters. Next question. What are frames? <laughs> Uh, frames are the different still shots of all, all of these uh, things that you can flick through. That they're, one would say all animation is yeah, made up of. Right, yeah, yeah, made up of frames. Yeah, it's made up of frames. <laughs> but even 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 regular movie screens is frame, 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 move through to make like we're all looking. Photo, 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 move very, very quickly. And so we all look like we're moving. And, uh, and, and that's the same as animation, yeah. How many frames can be used per second? Oh, a lot. Forest. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna. I don't think you've ever said that my name like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let me tell you. Oh, let me tell you <laughs> tell Forest. Yeah, Sit on my fr lap. Fr fr forest. <laughs> You're gonna be surprised how high this number is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's hear it. Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Okay. Is there a range or? Uh, twenty to twenty-three. Okay. There are twelve basic principles of animation. Name two of them. Um, oh, the 12 pr principles of animation. Yeah, <laughs> Easy, you got this. No problem. Uh, the principle is um, always be kind. That's uh -huh. one. Yeah. Uh, treat people as you'd like to treat yourself. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. <laughs> um, and it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down, you have to get back up. Got it. But also the principles are that... Um, one word. It's just they're Drawings. Yeah. <laughs> frames. Uh-huh. Movement. Uh-huh. You love color. right now in this episode. <laughs> uh, try to put a couple of songs in there. Uh -huh. uh, Disney, kill off the mum or dad very early on. Yeah. You kill off dead a parent, parent as soon as you can. <laughs> That's how you get the animation up and running. Talking animals. How if does, the animals talk, <laughs> the humans don't talk quite the yeah, same. We, we, if the we, people we, talk, we, the animals don't. These are we the only principles needed, of we animation. Only, we, we, only needed two. we only need two. How does rigged animation different from traditional? Uh, rigged animation is different. Oh, oh, that's like the ones like Who Framed Roger Rabbit where you have animation playing with regular folk. Oh. Mm. Name some examples of 2D animation. Oh, um, a movie. yeah, 2D. Uh, easy. P Pinocchio. Um, easy uh, Snow White. 3D. You got a couple 3D ones. 3D, Toy Story, um, fucking The Incredibles. <clears throat> Who was the first famous animated character? When was it? The most famous one. Earliest. Who was the first? First, first famous. Uh, the earliest. It'd be a steamboat willy. Oh, no, it'd be the one before that that had the long ears that all the hipsters wear. Had the long ears. ears. Yeah, no, there's, a, there's another one that's like, like, but, like not but, like Mickey Mouse, but he's like, he's something rabbit. He's a mm -hmm. uh, fucking shonky rabbit or whatever his name is. Okay. Shonky rabbit. Many cartoon <laughs> characters only have four fingers. Yeah. Why? Because putting five fingers on an animated character looks fucking weird. You ever see when they do it? There are too many danglies, and it's just for um, <laughs> too many dangle dangles. Yeah, too dangle many dangles. dangles. Like the Simpsons. The Simpsons are four fingered animals and the thumb. So three fingers mm -hmm. and a thumb, right? But um, it just looks for um, perspective or just for how it looks. It's just a, a visual thing. Okay, a couple more. Qu well, we'll skip. No, we'll do that. What is stop motion? Stop motion is is not a drawn animation, but it's when you get like a plasticine thing and you move the arm a little bit, take a photo, move the arm a little bit, take a photo. And that's okay. that's things like all those Rankin Bass Christmas specials and stuff like that are all stop motion. What does CGI stand for? Um, what is it? Oh, fucking hell. I, I say I hate it all the time, and I don't know what it fucking <laughs> means. Um, something uh, cinematic graphic industries. Yep, nailed it. Uh, <laughs> what is tweening? Uh, tweening is when you make a cartoon for about a 13, 14 year old. Um, to create slower action, would you use more frames or fewer? Uh, that's got to be a trick question. <laughs> so I'm going to say more. More frames. Okay. Um, uh, let's ask a couple more questions. What was the, what was the first fully computer animated feature film? I... I believe it was Toy Story. The, the short that they had a short from uh, feature length though. Yeah, 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 from Pixar. They did different things. Yeah. And the thing with the lamp jumping. You know what year it was? Toy Story. Ah, uh, golly. Uh, I want to say that Toy Story was 1998, the first one. And what is the most expensive animated movie to date? And how much did estimate? Most expensive animated movie to date. Um, 
I would say because of the you the technology that had to be used, who framed Roger Rabbit would be the most expensive animated movie. How much did it cost, I think? Oh, in today's money, I would say it was a $150 million movie. What about in money of 1715? Was it made in 1715? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. He All just right. wants the calculator to come Andrew, out. Andrew, <laughs> uh, how did Jim do in his knowledge of animation? Zero through 10. 10 the best. Mm. I would say five out of 10, but if you rank some of the thinking behind the answers, you could go as high as a seven or eight. It's just a different way of looking at the question. Yeah. Mm, wow. Yeah, that's nice. why I support QAnon because <laughs> <laughs> okay. you got to look at things differently. We'll give them a five. See the reality. Right. Kelly, how did you do on confidence? I was going to give you a, a six on confidence, but after the QAnon comment, you get a negative five. All right. Negative yeah. fives. You're at zero, but I'm going to give you 11 so you can be poo on a stick. Because yeah. you, really yeah. yeah. you wanted to be poo on a stick. So you're yeah. poo on a stick just for today. Poo on a stick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cuts clothing. Fellas, the sport of business means demanding excellence from your craft and wardrobe. Your fit needs to be versatile, blending timeless style and comfort so you, you look as good as you feel. For that, there's Cuts Clothing. They've taken classic male fashion staples like the plain tee. They've refined it, combining premium quality and minimalistic aesthetic. Cuts shirts, polo shirts, hoodies, crew shirts are made for the man. Who works hard, plays hard, and never settles for less. All in the sport of business. I bought cuts, the Cuts t-shirts. Oh, they're not nice. You never felt cotton quite like them. Lovely. I have the Cuts shorts. Oh, I bloody love Cuts. I have a Cuts hoodie as well. I have the shorts. I have the, I have a t-shirt and a polo and a hoodie. But the t-shirt, I wear a lot of black t-shirts in my nose. The cotton's very good. Cuts is a premium, uh, they're premium. Each piece of clothing is designed with custom engineered fabric, expertly graded for the perfect fit. Arming you for every challenge and opportunity. It's not a lifestyle, it's not just clothing. It's an office leisure apparel for the sport of business. Get 1.5% off your first <laughs> one. Wait, wait, where's the dot there? Get 15, Jesus Christ, this is a big saving. Get 15% off your first, look, I'm only reading what they've written down here, people. I'm telling you, you better get onto this because this this is obviously a typo and they want to fix it. Get 15% off your first order by going to cuts.com slash IDK. That's cuts.com slash IDK for 15% off the only shirt worth wearing. Cuts. Now, I know you probably look at me and you think, that's a guy who's got his mental health under control. But between me and you, <laughs> it hasn't always been that strong. What with the, they're always watching. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? I've had depression throughout my life, debilitating pressure, and I got help through therapy. Go see a therapist, speak to someone, there's no shame in it, and better help will assist your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, it's not a self-help, it's a professional counselling done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available which may not be available local in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide, it's an for everybody. Uh, you go in, you log into your account anytime and send a message to your counsellor. You will get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly videos or phone sessions. So you won't ever have to sit in one of those uncomfortable waiting rooms looking at the other people going, oh, what's wrong with that fellow? What's wrong with this woman? BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counsellors if needed. It's also more affordable than tr tr traditional offline counselling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living your happier life today. So visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK. Slash IDK, remember to write the slash IDK. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health and help of an experience from help <laughs> with an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and the I Don't Know About That listeners get 10% off 
their first month. So go to betterhelp.com slash IDK. Yeah. Get your mental health good. Better help. All right. Uh, all right, Andrew. Briefly, how does animation work? You can be a little bit less than brief. I just asked Jim to be brief, but he said old school and you do a drawing slightly different, blah, blah, blah. But maybe you can tell us a little bit. Fundamentally, animation is the illusion of movement through the playback of images sequentially. And that could be on film, it could be on a computer, it could be on a flip book. Any way that you can get rapid succession of images to utilize the persistence of vision in your eye, which is basically your brain and your eye work together to create a temporary imprint of an image. And it lasts for a fraction of a second, you know, depending on how much light is in the room, you, the persistence of vision could last for you know, one thirtieth of a second or less or more, but that's why, you know, 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second tends to look natural to the human eye. Oh, 24 frames a second. You're pretty you're close. Almost, you're yeah. almost there, but you got it yeah, wrong. When you answered the frame rate question, that was like silent film era where they're like hand cranking the oh, film. Oh, no, through. no, I'm not into these modern fandangle fucking <laughs> cartoons. Yeah. I like a good old school fucking Porky Pig. Yeah. And Porky Pig, he was rocking around at 20 frames a second. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, and they well, used to repeat the same frame over and over again. That's why you went even and even and even it like that, right? Uh -huh. That was just a, they were trying to save film. <laughs> uh, what does the word animation mean? Jim said drawing of movement. Mm. How's that? That was pretty good, eh? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Is that good? Is that a good answer? Well, I mean, it's in, uh, conceptually, it's right. It's like images that play back to create the illusion of movement, but they don't necessarily have to be drawings. They could be photographs or, or computer generated images. There's your CGI, computer generated computer images. Computer generated images. Yeah, it's right there in front of you. So, Fucking yeah. computer generated. Yeah, I read generated. it says animation is literally translated from French as soul. Yeah. Well, that's why the Disney animator said it's not just the illusion of movement, it's the illusion of life. You're trying to bring a character to life that audiences relate to, and the sooner you kill their parents, the sooner they can relate <laughs> to the character. I did, I did, did you work on the movie Soul? I didn't remember hearing that in your credits. I didn't work on oh, Soul. Thank no. God I didn't like Soul. <laughs> I, I loved it. No, I'll tell you what was wrong with Soul. <laughs> Give me a dead parent first of all. That gives you a bit. Of, <laughs> that, that, there was no dead parent. It gives you a bit of drive. Wasn't the dad dead? Yeah, his. Dad. Oh, his daddy was an old man. Who and up, there's fucking, no parent that dies. Yeah, but I, that that one was boring as well. It's, oh, my wife died. You're old. <laughs> anyway, so 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 the problem the problem with soul is everyone's going up into the middle world or heaven or wherever they were going. All the little souls were moving along. And then he's like, oh, I haven't played enough piano. There's people who have just died and left families and little children and never got to say goodbye to their loved ones. And he's bitching and moaning that he hasn't fucking paid enough jazz. Calm down. You don't deserve to be the first person to come back into the real world because you haven't played <laughs> jazz. Doesn't make sense to me. Very angry with Sol. You don't like jazz? I don't. No, I don't. I <laughs> it play. really comes down to that. Oh, God, Jay. How do you feel about La La Land? You know Land? what I do? Oh, I hated See, La La Land. See, it's a jazz Land. thing. And I love musicals, thing. but La La Land drove me insane. What about Whiplash? <laughs> I didn't like Whiplash either. Yeah. Really? Oh. I didn't watch Whiplash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you the truth, right? So, so uh, J.K. Simmons, who was the guy in in Whiplash, mm -hmm. yes. wrote Harry Potter, he, and and uh, <laughs> and he and he uh, and he won the Oscar for Whiplash. Uh, the next scene that he did out of Whiplash was a movie that I did called Punching the Clown, and he did a scene with me, and everyone's like, he's going to win the Oscar. And I think I did say to him, oh, I loved you in Whiplash. I still haven't seen Whiplash. <laughs> wait, you well, did a movie called Punching the Clown? Yeah, wait, what the hell is that? Yeah, part two. With, uh, part two. Uh, is that why Tommy Caprio calls Henry. masturbating Punching the Clown? No, it was just a little, little. little that was a guy, Henry Phillips. Henry, he, Henry he, Phillips. He, did. he really does call it that, though. Yeah. He says it all the yeah, time. Yeah, well, that's maybe why they called the movie mm. that after Tommy Caprio. But yeah, <laughs> um, I was just a small part in it. I was just a small part in it. So persistence of vision. You mentioned that before. It is not when Stevie Wonder really tries to see. <laughs> Um, but so what does that mean? When he you, squints, he, when, when he squints. Like, why would he squint? How would that, that help him? Like, like if you put like a question mark on the end of this song, isn't she lovely? Like that's because he's really trying to tell. <laughs> okay. okay. So, uh, Andrew, <laughs> can, can, can you explain that a little bit? Can you just talk about that a little bit more? Cause I, I, I've heard that term before and I guess I just never really thought about it. So well, it's kind of, it's the principle, um, that makes animation, work. It makes the illusion work because the way your eye and your brain work together to imprint those images in your in your mind's eye 
it, it kind of tethers them together when those imprints happen at a certain rate. Okay. And so all animation is made up of blank. It's supposed to be frames. And what are frames? Jim said magic moving characters, frames and moving pictures. Frames. They're, 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 I always remember like I used to go into those like memorabilia stores and they used to go, we have a frame from Fantasia. I thought it was a cell. Yeah, and they call them cells. Yeah, they had a cell. We have a cell from Fantasia. And it was this and you're like, that must be the most valuable thing in the world. And there's fucking 24 of them a second. There's fucking <laughs> loads of these cells kicking about. Are cells and frames the same thing? They're not. So uh, okay. f- <laughs> playback playback of the film would be at 24 frames per second. So you're watching a live action film from basically the 1930s onward. It's at 24 frames a second. Every frame is a different, slightly different image. But in animation to save cost in the hand-drawn days, they would do 12 drawings a second and shoot each one twice, especially if it was a slow moving action. But if you've got Snow White walking through the forest with all the animals and the cameras panning left to right, then they would do 24 drawings a second because otherwise you get sort of a choppy effect and then the persistence of vision doesn't work quite as well. Something looks looks wrong with it. But also, but the, the cam- the, sorry, the cells always had like the clear bit. So that's like you could leave Snow White in the same forest and just put cells over the top of it, right? Or is, is a frames completely drawn and cells are partly drawn or... Well, on. the frame is just basically one frame of film going through the, the gate. So you open up a spool of film and you see all the frames, but the image might be different from one to the next, or, or the image might be the same from one to the next if it's the same drawing. Um, the cell is just basically the transparency so that you can have the drawing of the character over the background without completely covering it up like a oh. opaque piece of paper. Okay. Like projection slides. From back in yeah. the day. Or like a like a paper doll, but if it was a drawing. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I get it now. So it so frames per second, you said in, in older days it was a lot it was not a lot, but it was slower. Twenty to twenty three and yeah. now it's twenty four. So that's why film yeah. looks different. Like that when you see the older Yeah, with when with the advent of sound, you needed synchronized a turning of the film gate. Uh, so they invented a mechanical crank so that it would play back consistently at 24 and the sound was predictable and synchronized. Before that, with silent films, you had to crank the, the camera to record it. You're running film through the gate. Then you also had to crank it again to play it back on a projector. I always so, think those guys who cranked it, they must have one arm that was fucking massive. <laughs> was <laughs> one, and they might have shown up to work one time drunk and the movie took like an hour and a half and it was meant to take like an hour and ten minutes. And then they might be like, oh, God, I'm meant to go out and fuck Sharon. She, she wants me over at her house and this film goes a bit quicker. <laughs> <laughs> um, have, you, uh, have you ever worked on video games? Is that like the same animation process? Is that... It's similar. A lot of people nowadays are coming from video games into movies. And now people that worked at big studios like Disney are going back into video games at companies like Blizzard and Riot. Um, But the principle is the same. I mean, it's 3D animation on a computer that has a digital puppet with a digital rig that you articulate to create the movement. Just like the old days of King Kong, there was a physical puppet with a metal armature that you pose one frame at a time and photograph. The computer equivalent of that is the computer just does a lot of the in-between movement for you. And you can create much more precise, much more fluid, high frame rate actions that way. But uh, video game animation is kind of like the process that happens before a movie like Toy Story or Frozen gets rendered. When those movies get rendered, they're basically capturing a little bit of animation, rendering it through one camera at one angle and then telling the story like a live action director. With video games, you create the animation as sort of an instance that you can put anywhere in time or space, and then the player can engage with it. So animating for video games is creating, like we need a guy falling down who got shot, or we need a guy jumping, or we need somebody you know, walking slowly or running or crouching. And then the computer blends those individual samples together. Here's a little thing for you. Okay, so so when you okay, obviously when you make something like Frozen, you go, that's an animated movie. But do you see things like do you see Jurassic Park as an animated movie because it was all done on computers and CGI and No, I mean there's only like the amount of animated footage in Jurassic Park is really negligible compared to like an Avengers movie nowadays. I think it's only 
I think something like 10 minutes of actual CGI animation in the original Jurassic Park, because they also had a lot of puppets and a lot of photography where they're kind of not showing the dinosaurs. But no, I don't see that as an animated movie. Some people say James Cameron's Avatar with the blue aliens could be considered an animated movie because there's so much CGI in that movie. But I, I think I would say the Phantom Menace. That moment when the Gungans were fighting with the with the fucking robot droids. That's not a real world. You're just watching a cartoon then, right? Yep, yep, you yeah. are. Yeah. Yep. Because yeah, uh, I didn't see that. Got to lie and stop telling people I was an actor in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's a puppet. And so the Avengers is, is well, you didn't say it was animated, but a lot of it was animated. Yeah, I mean, in the same way that James Cameron's Avatar could be considered animated, where there's motion capture of real actors, you know, sometimes CGI puppets that look just like the actor to create a visual effect. But uh, there's also a lot of hand keyframed animation where animators are getting in there, moving the puppet around and creating exactly the performance or the effect that the director wants. So it's sort of a marriage between data created by an actor and keyframed information input by an animator. How long did it take the actor to get into the Hulk makeup? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that one. It's probably more on the live action side. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there are 12 basic principles of animation. I asked Jim the name too. He said, always be kind, treat people as you like to be treated. It's nice to be important, but it's important <laughs> to be nice. A couple of songs. I take detailed notes. <laughs> that parent movement. Well, are any of those right? A couple of songs. Well, I mean, that's why I, I say the answer could be as high as a seven out of 10 instead of a five, because the spirit of those answers <laughs> <spirit>. is true. <laughs> is true to working at a big animation studio with hundreds of artists. You got to get along with people to get an animated movie made. It's like, first and foremost, if the group doesn't get along, you're not going to get an animated movie made. It's just too big of a team. Right. But the principles of animation relate to what an animator thinks about when creating animation. So in the old hand-drawn days of Disney, they would say squash and stretch creates the illusion of tangibility, right? Physics, physics at a basic level to create the sense of a form, like the flower sack is the classic example. It squashes down and then it stretches when it jumps. Uh, and that gets applied to anything from a bouncing ball to Mickey Mouse running and hopping. There's slight deformation on the shapes that are relative uh, as they articulate so that yeah, it's like if like you saw an animation of a bouncing ball and if as it came down the hill it kind of squashes into an oval right and then like yep. regains its shape okay uh, you know you exactly. just reminded me of that video game cuphead have you ever played that you love cuphead. yeah yeah, yeah and it's like an old timey animation vibe to it and, it, and there's a lot of that <laughs> squashing and yeah stretching and that yeah when you make when you are making frozen i always find this weird about successful films or i'm curious about it um, when you were making Frozen, were you sitting around with the other other matters going, "This thing's going to fucking be a phenomenon," or were you like, "Yeah, oh, we'll just churn this out"? <laughs> I thought it was going to be successful while working on it, not to the degree that it was, like a one point two billion dollar phenomenon. But um, the studio had already made Tangled, that was already very popular um, and very expensive. I think the question earlier, oh, what's yeah. the most expensive animated movie? It's that one. And it's not because of the images on screen. It's because of the very long development cycle that it had. We all know in Hollywood development can be uh, a long and drawn out process with a lot of restarts and resets and thrown out work. And Tangled was one of those projects. Yeah, it was number one at $270 more, $74 million. When they animated Michael Jordan in Space Jam, why couldn't they make him act even in that state? <laughs> He's still a bad actor. He's it? still a bad yeah. actor, even with animation. He's just doing a fucking voiceover. No one can jump like that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so squash and stretch, are there any other principles of animation? that, that is like There's timing and spacing. Spacing is the position change of an object across the frame. So if the ball starts here, then it squashes, goes up, 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 hits its peak, comes down, and then hits. The spacing is, you know, just... Exactly that, the ball traveling through space in different positions. Timing is how fast does that happen, right? So if, if it's happening faster, you might only see the ball for one, two, three, four, five drawings or images or frames. If it's happening slowly, you might see it for way more frames, which is either going to feel like slow motion or it's going to make the ball feel like it's really big and traveling a great distance like a planet or something. 
Now, this might sound like a silly question. Uh, there was a kid at my school who used to draw and it, and it just looked like Disney stuff. It just looked like he obviously was fairly Style, influenced. Yeah. But it, and he just knew how to do it. Even when he was a little kid, he knew how to do it. And by the time he was 18, he was doing it. And I think he went on to work for some animated thing. I haven't seen him since school. But um, is it just people who are naturally talented at this or can you go to university to become an animator? Or like I assume like working for Disney and Pixar and all that type of stuff, this is like entering the Premier League of, of your job. Like, okay, I'll rephrase this. Do you ever meet like a like a, a cartoonist, an animator from like the Family Guy, and you're like, "Hello, mate. Yeah, good for you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the friend that you talked about had a good sense of what they call appeal, which is one of the principles of animation from that list of twelve mentioned earlier. And appeal is sort of the inherent charisma or draw that an image has. So like when a young artist named Fred Moore joined Disney, people said he had a great sense of appeal. He redesigned Mickey Mouse from Steamboat Willie to the kind of Fantasia Mickey that we still associate with the character today. And the eyes were sort of bigger. They had pupils and whites. They're kind of slightly at an angle. He made the head bigger relative to the body to give it like a cuter feel. The hands were really big and had big white gloves. He's squishy and you kind of looked like a more cuddly character than the, the kind of black simple silhouette from the, uh, the Abiworks cartoons. So appeal is, it's almost like the attractiveness of the image. And uh, yeah, and, and so, Disney is like the most recognizable, like you're like, Oh, that's a Disney princess. There's such mm -hmm. a, well, I, I was watching, I, I was watching a documentary on Walt Disney. Um, I think it's on Disney plus. You can watch this documentary. Anyway, uh, they, they were talking about like when they were making Bambi, for example, and they, they had like, maybe 15 animators sitting around. They had this deer just sitting there in like on some hay in the middle of them. Does that still go on? Do you still have to go out and look at animals and stuff like that? Or do we all go, fuck, I know how to do a skunk. <laughs> just do a there's, a there's a lot more internet searching that goes on in making animated movies now. Not nearly as much of the in-house visits. You know, when they did that for Lion King, brought in real lions, there was a lot of utility to it. It was educational, but I think there was also some publicity behind it too. Like it looked really cool. Cause, cause I got to tell you, whoever did the Tasmanian devil, not close. <laughs> I know you thought the internet would never be invented and no one would <laughs> fact check you. This is what a Tasmanian devil looks like. Not fucking even in the same <laughs> realm. And you're just going, and that's a Tasmanian devil lying cunt he is. <laughs> Yeah, so a, so a, do you want to speak on that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's as much a Tasmanian devil as Sonic is a hedgehog. You know, yeah, it's sort of just, yeah, but it's an impression with a few graphic yeah. shapes. I mean, with, with the Tasmanian devil, they gave them little furry devil horns, didn't they? Oh, you know, I it just, don't remember horns anymore. I, I just, I just remember going, <laughs> and then spinning so around. Now, yeah. now, the only thing that's accurate is Tasmanian devils do go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say that's how Tam people from Tasmania sound. Oh, no. That's, but, <laughs> you know what they eat? What do you reckon Tasmanian devils eat? What's their main diet? Uh, Taco Bell. Apples. Oh. They fucking love apples. Really? Really? Mad, mad well, for them. Mad for them. He's only defense things from Australia. Just as, I never said that was great. I'm just. Uh, no, you're, I, you're, I, you're like Sonic I've, the Hedgehog. I've, I've like, never seen a Tasmanian devil in the wild. I've spent as much time in Tasmania as you have. Every day I've spent in Tasmania, you were with Oh, that was me. your first time there? That's my first time. Oh, I liked it. It was It was, it was nice. Uh, we, it's we, a small place. We got fucking you on you land on the you land on the, You <laughs> land on the plane and they do a U-turn on the runway. I remember there was like, what? We got fucked up in Tasmania. We did, yeah. It was years ago. about five. Guys were ago, Tasmanian we, devils. We uh, we went crazy in Tessie. <laughs> we did. It was fun. Uh, how does rigged animation differ from traditional? Uh, Jim said, like Roger Rabbit, animation with regular folk. So I'll I'll give the benefit of the doubt to that answer. On Roger Rabbit, there were actually physical rigs on set. You know, if Baby Herman was moving a real live action cigar around, there was a mechanical armature or rig that was doing that. Then they had to literally draw the baby over the rig to cover it up, right? Almost like makeup over the film. But it's it's not live action hybrid animation. Rigged animation is like anything from King Kong to Toy Story that's three dimensional and requires either a real puppet or a digital puppet. Um, whereas drawn animation is exactly that. It's just a drawing, you know, from your hand to the to the image that brings it to life. Here's one for you. Why do they? I remember when they made Jurassic Park, and they said they said this is one of the most expensive movies ever. Or when they make Titanic, they go because of the scene with the boat, and all those scenes are CGI. 
It's always baffled me that should, they're done on computers. Shouldn't that be way, way cheaper than just fucking getting a little model and doing it? Like why did – why was it – or have they brought the price down on CGI? But CGI seemed to be very expensive. Why was that? It's uh, Some of it is the complexity of the hardware. Some of it is the education of the artists and the technicians that have to execute the work. And the com- computers are not as smart as people give them credit for. It's a lot of input. It's basically just a, a an assistant who holds your hand, right? Like in the days of King Kong, you had to shoot every frame in order. And if you messed up, you had to start over or just leave it in the movie. Whereas in the computer, you can say, I'm going to jump to frame one, pose the character like this. I'm going to jump to frame 90 and pose the character like this. And you can let the computer just in between it for you. And it'll Mm -hmm. look terrible because there's no breakdown motion. But the computer is basically like, a memory bank. It stores all the information so you don't have to kind of scramble to do everything correctly on one try. But have, have, we, still- have we ever lost a great uh, movie scene, a Pixar scene or something like that because uh, someone had been animating on their computer and then they watched porn and they got a virus? <laughs> <laughs> that must have happened, right? And also, while I'm at it, who animates that uh, animation porn? Who does that? Because <laughs> some of the drawings are pretty real to Probably life. Probably your friend from high school. You know what I mean? Like that guy must be like, I could actually work for Disney. This Bukagi scene is fucking. <laughs> I've got this princess down. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to get you any trouble. You don't have to answer. There's a, a lot more people working in our industry now than 20 years ago. So naturally the sea level will rise in every category of animation. Yeah. All right. and, and, and what do you think of anime? I always think they're sweating too much and their eyes are too big. Every, you know, they're, they're, they're that Japanese, sounds so they're, they're Japanese, no, 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 I'm, not, I'm not saying their eyes are too big. I, I mean, like, you know, they, like they, they do blow up. They're like, like, they're like, yeah. They get like shocked Sailor and like Moon. sauces on them. And then there's always a bead of sweat going down. They're always like, ah, and you're like, you're like, all right, calm down, everyone in anime. You know, there never seems to be an anime that anyone just has a nice conversation where they're not freaking the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> you should watch the uh, Hayao Miyazaki movies of Studio Ghibli. They're kind of considered the Disney of Japan, and their movies are super mellow. You Is probably that Totoro? Enjoy. It's Totoro mm-hmm. and Spirited Away and uh, Ponyo. Uh, Princess Mononoke is a great one. I mean, they're all great, but yeah, that, that's kind of the more chill approach. What was your growing up? You obviously had a healthy uh, interest in animation. What was your uh, what was your kick as a kid that you really liked? I loved Disney. I loved the Warner Brothers cartoons, the Looney Tunes characters, the classic films from the 40s and 50s. But I was a 90s kid, so I loved every new Disney movie that came out. I remember the trailer for Nightmare Before Christmas really captivated me. I didn't know how they had done it. I mean, I knew it was kind of like how the Rudolph yeah. Frank and Bass films were done, but it was so much more fluid and so much more sophisticated. And I remember my neighbors went to go see it. And then I wasn't allowed to see it because of some of the content in the film. I was really young when it came out. Mm. But that's one of my favorites. It's just so inventive and takes advantage of what animation can do that other film mediums can't do. I'll tell you what I like. Pinky and the Brain. Yeah. That was some that solid, was solid one. afternoon yeah. cartoon, yeah, that one. Also, yeah. Danger Mouse never got a big play over here, but uh, living in Australia, Danger Mouse was a big one. Yeah, I, the, I, the, the Spider-Man is from a long time ago. I used to like, but... There was a part where he would go to some underworld and then he would just be swinging through some like weird caves and I always made him feel weird, that part. <laughs> but I did like that. And then I also like Ren and Stimpy, which was really- Ren and, Stimpy, yeah. Ren and Stimpy was the first edgy, like mainstream thing where the mm-hmm. where the creatures were vomiting mm-hmm. and stuff yeah, like but that. Yeah, but from afar, the animation would be kind of just, just pretty basic. And then they would have these close-ups of their tongue with like yeah. fur and a all the details. Or whatever. It was like just like ah, I was like. There's a really good hardcore. documentary on Nickelodeon that talks about that and how yeah. that was like transformative for the the kids show industry because Ren and Stimpy was so like disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a weird cartoon. It's a really too, good yeah. documentary. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems now yeah. that I watch a lot of the cartoons that my son watches. There's like a dog cat and there's like cat pick, dog pick, pickle and peanut and all these different things. And they're like, it feels like they've gone back to very basic animation that people enjoy that on some level. I think maybe South Park is to blame for that or to be credited for that. I don't know. Am I? Because it feels like simple animation is very popular now. It's had a resurgence. Yeah, it is. Simple animation is the easiest to do by hand. And I think there's been a whole generation that grew up on the Pixar films and DreamWorks films that are so photorealistic at times 
and there is an appeal and an access an accessibility to a simple drawing and how that communicates. Mm -hmm. So I think part of it is just a reaction to doing the opposite of what's possible, you know, taking it back to basics and simple also just tends to be funnier. You know, if, if something is so impressive and lavish, it tends to be less funny. Is, is Gumby respected in the community? Like if he was to show up. <laughs> is he personally yeah, respected? If he was to show up. If there was you a should party, see him at parties. If there was a party and all the animated people were there and then Bunky. Gumby came along, would they go, oh, God, it's Gumby. Oh, fuck, I used to love him as a kid. Oh, I can't even <laughs> talk to him. Respected in the community. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or are people just like, fucking Gumby, that hack. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what other cartoon? Like Luno. Do you remember that one? It was like, it was a Pegasus horse. And I think it was a 30 minute cartoon, but it was chopped up into two 15 minute, you know, whatever chunks. And so when I was little, my mom would tell me, I'd be like, how long are we going to be? And she'd be like, it's an hour. And I'm like, that's four Lunos. That's how I, that's how I marked time when I was younger. Oh, I, was, I did that with my yeah, kid yeah, forever. But, it's, it's two SpongeBob's. <laughs> yeah. like, all right. Yeah. I know how long that's that is. Pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's over before you even want it to be. Andrew, can you explain to everybody the uncanny valley? This is Jack. You can't see him. Yeah. The, the uncanny valley is basically when it's usually associated with CGI, but it could be associated with sculpture as well. Like if you go to a wax museum and see a facsimile of a celebrity and it's not quite right, it looks like a corpse that's been slightly melted, but it still looks like Jimmy Fallon or Nicolas Cage. Uncanny Valley and Which is CGI. Funny Nicolas Cage looks like Jimmy Fallon if he was melted. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's quick. Quick. I like it. Yeah, you're right. I'm telling you. <laughs> I just said to myself, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. I tell you. <laughs> As always. But I remember when uh, there was a movie called Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within that came out 20 years ago. And that was kind of considered the first Uncanny Valley feature film. And you had a character voiced by Alec Baldwin who looked like a plastic Ben Affleck. And so there was already like another weird disconnect going on on top of the the, the plastic cgi oh that cute. that movie the beowulf beowulf that yep. thing's fucking terrifying and it's robert zemeckis and i fucking love anything robert zemeckis uh, did you ever does. read the book beowulf polar express uh, oh yeah I even polar express oh yeah good night kids <laughs> christmas is in the morning like it's fucking terrifying eyes are, they have the dead eyes they can't cgi when they try to make people look like actual people they yeah. haven't got it you can make them look like cartoon characters but like how close are you to actually okay that's a good way because i know they're bringing out a movie right now and james dean's going to be in it Right, and uh, so they're bringing back actors, and soon we're going to have a Marilyn Monroe movie and all that type of stuff. And I think they think they're close because you do things like you see Arnold Schwarzenegger younger as a Terminator and things like that. How, I just don't feel like they're quite there yet. Are they close to doing that, or is that a, a little while away from being really good? I think it's getting better, but I think it's a little bit like an exponential diminishing returns, right? It's like Toy Story 1 where the humans are basically Barbie dolls, mm. and then you've got Toy Story 3 where they look much better, and then you've got things like the, the digital stunt doubles like the young Arnold from Terminator where it's basically a real guy, and then they put a CGI face on it, and they kind of map it to that actor's face so that it it absorbs some of the motion and some of the spacing, but it's still not quite right. right. If you guys have ever seen like deep fakes where yeah, they'll put that, yeah. like a, like a Tom Cruise face on Jim Carrey or something. And it's pretty good. Yeah. And in some ways it's more convincing than a CGI replicant, but it's, it's still like a little off. Even when you're not using a 3d puppet, you're just using kind of deep fake technology, it's still uncanny. It's still off. Well, I thought Mark Hamill in The Mandalorian was close, but they made him not move very much when he saw his face. He just sort of stayed still. But then when they made Robert De Niro really young in the in that- Irishman. The, the Irishman. No. I was like, fuck it. Yeah, at least get another actor to do the body. No. He was meant to be 30 years old and Robert De Niro would go, oh, I'm going to kick the shit out of you. And it was still an 80-year-old bloke doing the kicking. <laughs> I tell yeah, you yeah. what, the way he was hunched over, giving you a kick. He's just always had that posture. But I would like, I would like if they get it to a reasonable level, um, for one of my specials to me to be younger. Okay. Mm. That'd be nice. Just idea. something younger, more hair. Blow the budget. Bigger on that. tits. Yeah, be, I want yeah, big, that's massive that's most tits. expensive. <laughs> You've got. Do you saw your space boobs? Yeah, I'm just gonna show. have tits, <laughs> just so I can get the men in to watch it, and then. Well, what was the I think, well, I think the, oh, the more subtle the difference in subject and outcome, the better it is. Like if you've got a 50-year-old and you want him to look 40, 
it's easier to do that than it is to make an 80 year old look 30. And I mean, basically the more work the computer or makeup artist has to do, the less effective it's going to be. Yeah. I thought they didn't do bad in Tron with what's his name, the dude, you know, Oh, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges in Tron looked pretty good. And then even Kurt Russell in the, uh, in the fucking Guardians of the Galaxy at the beginning when he's meant to be in the seventies. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, Yeah. He, he looked, he looked pretty good in the computer. First famous animated character, Jim said Shonky Rabbit. <laughs> you know the guy. It's, it's, he's like a rabbit. You can buy the ears at Disney, but he's like a rabbit. And I'm, I know what you're going to tell me. There was some, oh, oh, fuck the rabbit. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. It's fucking Felix the Cat or Betty Boop. Ah, yeah. it's Felix the Cat. Felix, hey, Felix the Cat predates Betty Boop. All right. I get it. I get it. One more point. <laughs> and then Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Oswald. Uh, Oswald. He was taken away after an unfortunate incident in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> Around the grassy knoll. <laughs> oh, I wasn't talking about that. He just, uh, he just me too to a woman at Disneyland. <laughs> I actually got to animate Oswald in uh, a short film called Get a Horse that played before Frozen. There's like this whole jamboree section at the end where they're performing to Turkey in the Straw and Oswald kind of peeks his head in and leaves. And the reason he's in the short is because I just took the Mickey Mouse rig and deformed him into Oswald. Ah. Now, people must have, it must have, because I remember seeing like Jurassic Park for the first time and being blown away by the CGI the first time I saw it, you know, and still that movie still stands up pretty good. Um, the first time, like, so when Felix the Cat came out, were people losing their shit? Or were they like, oh, that's interesting? Or people lining up going, you got to see it. It's like a cat. Yeah, I've seen cats before. No, no, it's like a drawing of a cat. What are you talking about? I've seen drawings of a cat. It's a, drawing, it's a drawing of a cat and the cat's moving. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you have to see it. Well, I think it was the first animated series that was widely popular, like had that mass appeal of a character like Mickey Mouse that would come later. But it looked like the newspaper comics of the day come to life. Before that, you had Windsor McKay, who was also a newspaper comic artist, but he would do these really elaborate drawings. Like if you've ever seen Gertie the Dinosaur, which came out in like what, 1907 or something like that. Maybe it was a little later. It's like the super elaborate drawing of a dinosaur. And it's it's almost like the way he presents it is like an Art Nouveau ringmaster, like presenting Gertie the Dinosaur, but really he's just filming himself then showing his drawings. And there was sort of a novelty aspect to it, but it wasn't mass market like a Disney character. And Felix was the first one that sort of created the model for the Betty Boops and the Mickey Mouses and the Oswalds and Popeyes that would come a little bit later. What? Where It's like a cartoon that's a celebrity. Why were cavemen such bad artists? Like I've seen a <laughs> lot of paintings. They just paint stick figures and all that type of stuff. Why were they so fucking simple? Like you should have could have got one like our oh, Korag the drawer, right? He comes in, <laughs> fucking that's a good picture. Why haven't we walked into one cave and gone, oh, this is like frozen? <laughs> they didn't, so, they didn't you, have you pencils. Can give me a, you can give me a quicker or long answer, whatever you want. What do you think Andrew has uh, an answer? Yeah. He's an expert. They'd have to like chip away into rocks. I'm just, it's, it's a, it's <laughs> they didn't not have like, paper or like, pencils. It's not like we've inherently become better at drawing as we go along. you think there'd be one caveman who did some real intricate drawings, but they're always shit. I think we just have gotten better at drawing. Yeah. So I know some character designers who really like cave art because of the the simplicity and uniqueness of the shapes, but they didn't have any way of really recording anything except for memory. And the only way to see an animal still was either dead or wounded, right? And so watching them move was sort of like a quick impression that you then had to take with you, go back to the cave, and then scrape onto a wall with a rock. So I think there were just more barriers to being comfortable while creating the art. Oh, that's I, true. Have you I ever? I knew he'd have an answer. <laughs> have you, you all looked at me yeah. like you wouldn't have an answer. <laughs> I, d- I didn't think he was going to, but good job. Um, have you ever tried to draw an animal from memory? It, I've it's, never tried it's to draw an animal. It's remarkably hard. Yeah. <laughs> like it's so much easier to do it if you're looking at an image of it, but holy crap, you you really don't know how deformed an animal can look until you try that. Also, because when you look at, like, the Egyptian walls and they've got all the different people and they've got, like, cat's heads and all that type of stuff and then there's a snake coming out of their forehead and all that type of stuff, and we all think that's a pharaoh and a this and it's telling some historical tale, I reckon there's a good chance that they were just like the comic books and that was like, oh, fuck, another episode of Snakehead. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> 
And we're, all, we're, all, we're all trying to look at it like, and obviously the pharaoh and cats are very important. Snakehead and the cat. Oh, I love this. Great episode. <laughs> One um, thing about like Egyptian mythology and Greek mythology is they have a lot of deep lore, like the Marvel universe and a lot of characters. So I think it, I think that you're onto something there with the entertaining drama of all the stories around these broad characters. Another point. Yeah, yeah and there'd that. be shit characters that came in. Oh, molehead. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take off. Uh, oh, molehead uh, based characters. Yeah, they're always like a human body with a different head. That, yeah, was, yeah, that yeah. was the Egyptians really yeah. went for that. Bird head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bird head they tried, didn't go real. Snake head and fucking cat head were their number, the highest rating yeah, yeah, shows at the time. <laughs> I have a question about working on, like, you know, the Disney films. Obviously, not, you know, there's a huge team of animators. How do how does your work break down? Like, do you get assigned a character? Do you get assigned a scene? How does that play out? Uh, every animator has different strengths as an actor. You're basically acting in slow motion through the digital puppet. Some people are really funny and create, you know, great body language with the characters. Other people are really good at shooting reference of themselves and then capturing it in their animation and creating really moving performances of crying or, or deep thought. Uh, and you kind of get typecast on certain characters. Like on Frozen, I mainly worked on Princess Anna because the supervising animator, Becky Breezy, I think responded to choices I was making. But then you had other animators like Hiram Osmond, who was supervising on Olaf and created just wildly funny body language that would get laughs in the theater just because of how he animated that character. So your strengths are recognized by your supervising art team and then you get sort of cast on roles. Oh, like that's, that's, that's super interesting. That's interesting. So you sort of get a character that you're meant to draw and then other people get other characters. Okay. Um, so do, do you, have you ever been in like trouble where they're like, you're just doing crowds? <laughs> <laughs> you I mean, you're usually, you're not doing crowds because you're in trouble. You're usually doing it because you're green. You're, you're new to the studio and they want to get you comfortable with the workflow. Um, and, you know, showing in dailies and interacting with the director and just developing a lot of muscle memory with how to do animation on that platform. And then once you get, you know, mature in your abilities and you might get more special acting scenes. Have you are- ever had a character cut from a film? Like, have you ever been like making Aladdin? And you were doing Aladdin's friend Steve, who he goes back and chats to every now, <laughs> chats to every now and again. And Steve's like, "I reckon you should fucking go after her, mate. I reckon she's hot to trot." And he's like, oh, "I don't know. I'm just a peasant." Go, go, fucking dress up like a king. Go on, all right, Steve. And then he goes off. Yeah, what happened to Steve? I, I've never had, I've never had a character like Steve cut from a project that I was working on. But there is a, fa- a story from the Jungle Book where there was a rhinoceros named Rocky the Rhino, and he was completely cut from the film, I think, because Walt Disney just didn't like the character. Yeah, and, so that and does he happen. had one song called I'm Horny. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack Whitehall, when he was on the podcast, didn't he say he had a speaking role in Frozen oh, and yeah. then got downgraded? Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, wait, he, who, he was, who was this? Jack Whitehall. Jack Whitehall. He's now, oh. he's now, he's a friend of mine from back in the day in England. He's, comedian, he's yeah. a comedian. He's He's now the second lead in the Jungle Cruise movie with The Rock. He's the other lead. I think oh, he's he's playing the first homosexual Disney mm. character. So there was a bit of controversy wow. about him getting that part. And then also then people go, it should have gone to a gay actor because uh, Jack does very well with the women. But, but yeah, it, but he's it, questionable. It, he was it, flirting with me. He told us he had a- <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will. Uh, I can't disclose too much, but there was a, a famous comedian who has been Cancelled. Who almost had a major secondary role in Frozen, but I can't say who it is. Was he cancelled before, or was he cancelled? Well, well, well after. Well oh, after. Oh, well yeah, after. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he's Jack. I remember our okay, podcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I can think of so yeah, many no, people. I, I think it's Louis C.K. who was playing playing Olaf's Louis cousin. Louis C.K. Crystally. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Jack Whitehall's character was gothy troll priest, and it says, <laughs> oh, yeah, it, yeah. It, says it says voice uncredited. So apparently, it, it, he still existed in the movie, but didn't have any lines. Uh, they took all his lines. Away, oh, so. interesting. Yeah, so that's that's news it. to me. Um, <laughs> Many cartoon characters only have four fingers. Uh, how did this benefit the studios? And Jim said, "Too many danglies." Yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> and look right. It looks right. fucking weird. Doesn't look, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. But we yeah, I think, two I think the I think the too many danglies answer is fifty percent right. It's five out of ten right. Mm. Uh, but it's also a cost thing. You know, it's like if you've got a character who's as simple as Mickey or Felix, it looks it does look weird legitimately when they have five fingers. It's like too much information. 
in a small space for such a simple character. But, you know, in the case of The Simpsons, you probably could do those characters with five fingers and it would look a little uh, a little off, maybe. Sometimes it would look good, sometimes it wouldn't. So they erred on the side of just giving four fingers. And it makes a TV show much cheaper to produce when you've got many characters on screen all the time. Yeah, there you go. Cost saver. Uh, what is stop motion? Jim said not drawn. Move slightly and take photos of each movement. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it's basically just taking a photo one frame at a time and moving something a little bit at a time to create that illusion. Of and, motion. And, and that seems to have been around as long as uh, just drawn an animation, right? Because as you were saying, King Kong and all that type of stuff. Like I remember like when I used to watch like Jason and the Argonauts and all that type of stuff, they used to have all the like the little skeleton soldiers come out. And all that type of stuff. So that is that it was that before or after drawn animation? Uh, they kind of developed at the same time because once people figured out how to create motion through the sequential playback of film, you know, the, the very first animation were photographs uh, taken by a guy named Edward Moidbridge, who would photograph people walking through trip wires. And every time one of the trip wires was triggered, it would take a photo. So if they're like spaced apart at just the right amount, you get, you know, that little snapshot of, I, yep. hear, I hear small movements at a time is, is still how they make Kevin Costner act. <laughs> I have a thing against Kevin Costner. I, he, he, what he does is he picks good movies. The guy can't act for shit. I love his films. I okay, love him. I, I don't know what order are all the podcasts we have been recording come out, but there's going to be a lot of Kevin Costner bashing. Kevin Costner. I don't know, I don't know, what, like I know. which podcast is which one, but people are going to be like, "Why wow, is talking about Kevin me, Costner?" Like first, come he came at, me, out at the bro. French Chef. Now, <laughs> Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner doesn't emote, and his movies are fantastic. The guy picks the best films and then just stands there going. Oh, I'm in charge. I'm your bodyguard. Uh. Um, see, Actually, that was more the emotes. He would never think of going, uh, that'd be too much. CGI stands for uh, computer generated imagery. You said cinematic graphic industries around there. But uh, so we, uh, just to, I'm just going through the questions. What is tweening? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, make a cartoon for a 13 or 14 year old, Jim said. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's not correct. A tweening is just <laughs> no, creating the so in-between nice. image. So a tweening, uh, but, tweening is why that comedian couldn't be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's something that happens automatically now on a computer with, with directed choices by an animator, but it used to be something you had to do by hand. You draw Mickey Mouse in this pose, then in that pose, and you have to draw every in-between image to kind of create that fluidity. So it's it's basically just the in-between images between primary poses. You know what animation I've been missing that they don't do anymore is when back in the old Warner Brothers, the, the you know, Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner and all that type of stuff, if someone wanted to run really quickly, you heard a... Well, they ran they in place yeah. first. Yeah, they yeah. ran in place. And then they just had like a spiral underneath the person's body of legs just running yeah. around yeah. really quickly. Yeah. Bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> Get on it. Yeah, that, people like that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, to create slower action, you would use more frames, Jim said, which I, you said was correct earlier in another answer. Right? Yeah, so you use more frames to kind of eat up more time, essentially. So if something needs to happen on screen for five seconds, you know, five times 24 frames, whatever that is, and then if it needs to happen over one second, just 24 frames. So the, the slower the action, the more screen time it takes up, the more frames you need. Uh, we mentioned the most expensive movie was Tangled. Uh, first fully Tangled. I didn't. I would never have picked the Tangled. Yeah, I was let's, see, let's see if you can guess this. So Tangled was two hundred seventy-four million. Two hundred seventy-four um, million. Yeah. yeah. By contrast, what was the budget for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Ah, uh, because that was old money. Mm -hmm. uh, that would have been in all in old money eight hundred thousand bucks. One point four nine mil. Mm, more That's expensive crazy. than I thought. Snow, mm -hmm. Snow White. I'll tell you who should be me too. That bloody prince who kissed her to wake up, Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> That's the, he shouldn't be in any more film. Are they getting rid of him? So you got. Rid I, of, I actually saw that topic trending on Twitter. That exact topic, not too long and ago. And buddy, yeah. you got rid of uh, Uncle Remus because he was a slave hanging around on the plantation with all the bloody birds on his shoulders singing zippity doo dah. He had too happy a disposition. You got rid of him, mm -hmm. and then you, the prince still stays. I'm going to tell you other characters that should be cancelled. <laughs> Uh, Mufasa. I yeah. mean, sorry, Scar. Yeah, Scar. Got to yeah. He's just killing people. Yeah. Cancel that guy. Cancel. Nasty person. Yeah. Nasty person. 
the 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 baddie out of Aladdin, Jafar or whatever, he's no good either. Sorry, Forrest is under something. I was trying to ask him. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't he have these things? He said he's had examples. I can't read animation. his handwriting. Examples. He just did like hieroglyphics. <laughs> You said Andrew might have some examples. Oh of, yeah, you have uh, some. You have some examples so you could show it. us. About. Yeah. I, I truly had no idea what you were trying oh, to write. Oh, I, I, I want one, one I thing. That so was there, a cat there's, head there's, there's, a, there's a lot of um, urban legends and things that you can sort of prove. So there, there, there was a bit where there was all the dust and the smoke came up, and it was meant to say some swear word or triple X or something like yeah, that in the Lion King. Oh yeah, in oh. Lion King. In the Lion King. Oh, and, and then I the, think it just. Uh, oh, go ahead. And then in, in Roger Rabbit, and I freeze frame this, and I've seen the old footage. It's real. She doesn't have an un- underwear when she falls out of the car, and you can see Jessica Rabbit's, um, I'll say Warren. That's what. Uh, Warren? <laughs> yeah, Rabbit And in Warren. Little Mermaid, the priest had a boner. Oh, well, of course. Yeah. Priest. <laughs> so the, 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 the first two are, are true. The priest one is actually a misunderstood drawing of his knobby knee under his uh, mm. gown. Oh, yeah. yeah. Knees still I've, I've had people call it a knobby knee. <laughs> That's what I'll be saying in court. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit knobby kneed. <laughs> Wait, what's the other one that's true? Uh, oh, uh, in, in the original cut release of Lion King, I think when Simba lays down in the grass, the pollen or dust that comes up spells sex, sex yeah. I think. Sex. Or just like right. a couple. Yeah, I remember even, you know, when we were in elementary school, we knew that and we would pause the VHS tape on that frame and. And there do you think is. that was just That's how a, dire things were you, when we were young. There was like no no internet porn. We're like, guys, the, the, the word sex is on the screen. Do you think that was a disgruntled employee or someone just trying to have a laugh? I think it was just someone trying to have a laugh, to be honest. I mean, there's always jokes that happen. These movies are made by people <laughs> who live in the real world and have real senses of humor. Mm. And Ooh, yeah, I, I think nowadays one. that stuff just doesn't end up in the movie. It happens, you know, off screen. Have you put have you have you ever put any like Easter eggs into your scenes that would be meaningful to like you and the people in your life? Um, that's what I would. Oh, be doing. you mean you mean besides just like putting Oswald in the Mickey short? Yeah, um, like something, like something, something a in a scene where it's me. like this is something my wife would understand, or something like something small like that. Uh, probably not in the Disney films I worked on because the scenes are so you know, particularly directed by the time it gets to the animator, you kind of just have to perform it in a convincing way, but the ideas are generally figured out before they get to you. But uh, in the film, one small step that I directed, there's a scene where the main character Luna kisses an envelope before she puts it in the mailbox. And my wife did that before she applied to college and she got into the college she wanted. Aww. So that was like a detail that we're like, oh, we put it in because yeah. it was yeah. something my wife and that's did. That's why they were still married. She lives over the other side of the country now. <laughs> oh, no, no, we're happily now, married. Now, when, <laughs> now when, you're, uh, when you go home, see, I okay, I used to be a, a stand-up comedy enthusiast. I used to watch so much of it. And now I see so much. If I go out to a gig, I watch the other comics and all that type of stuff. I watch very, very little stand-up comedy at home now because, you know, I, I've seen so much of it. Do you ever turn on The Simpsons or do you just sort of go, and, uh, enough, I've seen enough drawings today? Um, you know, it's funny. The Simpsons is probably one of the few things I'll still watch that's animated, you know, but the old Simpsons, I'll revisit an episode from like season four or five, but I don't really watch the new stuff. Uh, I'll see the Pixar films that come out. I'll see the Disney films that come out. And maybe there's one or two films independent or from another studio that I'm interested in, but I don't watch probably more than three or four animated features a year. Um, I mostly am interested in live action television. So I, 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 I watch more animated movies than you. I have an yeah. eight-year-old. I watch them on, and I'm about to have another baby come. I've got 10 more years of this. Yeah. Just anything. But they're so good anything now. Anything you draw, I'm seeing it, mate. Yeah, I'm like seeing the it. Mitchells oh, God, the Mitchells versus the Machines. That was fantastic. I love the Mitchells versus that was the Machine. So that was my favorite funny one. And but good. I didn't want to mention it because you don't work for the Mitchells versus the Machine. <laughs> no, I, no, I work. I work for Netflix, and we own that, so it's all right. Oh, okay, because right. that was no. But very I wanted good. to say when you were first trying to guess what I do, and you said I'm in like the most nondescript space. <laughs> it's because, it's because it's first because, of all, it's because all the interesting stuff is in front of me. Yeah, you're, so that, can, that wall's built for storyboarding, isn't it? At the back, like it looks like. It's actually, I'm, I'm in a garage. You can see, you know, there's oh, the right. I thought it was a big garage. studio. He, he's also having what a baby, a so so his. Yeah, I moved into the garage because my my future son took my 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 home office. But you know, up, up here I've got some Disney memorabilia. There's Pinocchio and Frozen and Mickey Mouse characters. Um, 
and my wife's desk right here. Oh, wow. So both of you are living in the garage. This, this baby's <laughs> really taken over the place, eh? She's a... You should, you should she, think about building a house onto the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I like it in here better than in my old room. There's Because we've got the high ceiling and... And all of a sudden just, your wife can drive in and kill you at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is uh, Burbank. Nobody parks in their home here. <laughs> Everyone parks in the street. Oh, so you live right next to the Disney Studios, huh? You're just, just walking yeah. down the road to work every day. Yeah, I bought my house right before they relocated the studio to a warehouse in North Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going to get to walk to work. And then they're like, we're making Zootopia in a warehouse over by the Burbank Airport. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm still driving to work. Okay. It's still close. You're good. Yeah. Um, so were we going to show some? Oh yeah. Do you, do you want to show us a couple of those examples you said you had pulled up? Oh yeah. Oh, I had, there was more I wanted to say about the Mitchells first. Okay. Yeah. So when I saw that film, which I loved and I watched twice in the same weekend, cause I, it's rare that I love an animated movie that much at my age, mm -hmm. but <laughs> it was the first animated movie about a character who's probably going to grow up and be an animator. I've never seen that <laughs> before because animators always make films about musicians or actors or singers like whatever it is like animators usually create stories about sort of a uh, like like a stand-in occupation that's more exciting than sitting and drawing at your desk like even soul i think pete doctor entertained the idea of making him an animator instead of a jazz musician but more people can relate to somebody like sitting in a club playing an instrument it's more visually interesting right. but mitchell's it's like a girl in her room at her computer animating and shooting things and cutting things together she's making movies the way an animator would like i did in high school and it was like an animated movie about an animator that's a first and the movie's great so that was that was exciting to see. wouldn't an animation of them just look like a regular movie to us Okay, I mean, there is some there's some live action in the film here and there. Yeah, there, a follow up question. You went to high school with Kelly. Uh, yeah. What was her nickname, and what did she get up to? <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew her as Kelly Zabielski. Mm -hmm. ah, so yeah. I think now she goes by her nickname. Yeah. yeah Unless yeah. you legally changed it. What's your I'm nickname sure. now? My nickname's Dumb Bitch. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, we were in choir together. Kelly Black. We were in choir, choir together. together. Yeah. What? Do you, yeah. what you crack out a song the two of you. Come nah, on, give okay. it. Give us a bit of a sing song. Hallelujah. No, thanks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha, uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, you Kelly, do it. <laughs> sing. She's got a hard name to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, all right, let's see these examples. All right, so yeah, I'll show you guys. Uh, yeah, for you listening at home, this won't be fun. That's all right. Oh, I think, watching uh, on I think, YouTube. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll paint a picture. Yeah, okay, you, yeah, I, yeah might, uh, I might need you to enable screen oh, sharing. Yeah. Probably. Jack, enable screen. Enable screen. Enhance. Computer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wouldn't it be great if that's what being an animator was like? You just bark orders at the computer and then it just. I still mm. would fuck it up. Make character. Make you uh, look happy. Push the <laughs> make movie button. Go ahead and try. Re enhance. All right. All right. What are you showing us? Can you see? Can you yeah, see this? Oh, starting. yeah. That's that's some words. Oh, go. okay. Oh, cool. It's so this was the. The first test animation I did for my Patreon short film, The Brave Locomotive. This is a character named Henry, the engineer. Uh, and it was basically just a walk cycle test to figure out the character. He's so smoking. Are you from the 1950s? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a throwback film to 1940s Disney. So in it, characters, yeah, they smoke. Got a pipe. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a, he's got an old fashioned Popeye kind and of. And all pipe. the smoke is saying the word fuck. <laughs> That's right. It's all swirly because it's like a musical cartoon. <laughs> he's got some long but gloves. He's been doing some sort of proctology. He, he's been working on the railroad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, That's yeah. right. Yes, he's he, been working he, on he the railroad. He walks rail like Liam Gallagher. <laughs> Ooh, I like how specific that is. I don't know who that is, but the lead singer, but like. lead singer from Oasis. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I like Liam Gallagher. So how long did that take you to make? Like like a couple hours? Uh, this, is, this is maybe two days of work. Two days. Yeah, so I'll, I'll turn off some of these uh, layers here. So this is a, a program called TV Paint, and it's what a lot of uh, Disney animators use nowadays for animating on the computer. And I've got... There's nothing. Yeah, I got some line layer here. Oh, I can yeah. turn oh. up the opacity. Oh. So this is what it looks like when I when you first animate it. It's just like a oh, let me set this to. Loop. And so, like do you like do you draw drawing. it by hand on like an iPad and then then kind of like rig it up or? 
Yeah. So actually I've got my, my stylus here. And if I turn the thing around, you can see I'm on a tablet. Oh. So, so it's basically just like a drawing board. Oh, that's wow. also, also a computer monitor. And that's sensitive enough to do the intricate details just on the monitor. Like that's just it is. as good as drawing it's, on paper. It's, it's incredible. So this is a, a Wacom tablet and they're, They've been around for maybe almost 20 years now. Right, can, can I ask you a question? Okay, whenever I was a kid and I got like a book, because I, you know, I can't draw for shit, but I always liked animation. So you'd get one of those books that were like, how to draw Mickey Mouse or how to draw whatever. And there was always cones and circles and stuff. Like there was like <laughs> a big circle, then a little circle, then a cone and all that type of stuff. Is that bullshit or do you still think of it in that way? You know what I mean? You have to break things down into shapes, you know, otherwise it's just really hard to manage all that information, you know, because instead of seeing just like little lines everywhere, you kind of have to see the overall shape like this. His head is like this big wedge shape or his body is kind of like this, I don't know, pear shape. You kind of have to just break it down in, in rough form before you start getting into the details because otherwise it becomes difficult to manage, but you, you kind of train your eye to see things in big sections working general to specific. And when you're drawing something like this, are you taking from your life? Are you like picturing an uncle or something else or, or, or is it just sort of the, a back catalog of different characters you've seen before? Is it or just I mean, completely organic? I mean, in this particular character, I've been told by some of my Disney colleagues that there's a little bit of, um, self-portrait in here, but through the lens of like a 1940s Disney character design style. Uh, when I draw this character, I think of like Danny Kay a little bit too. I think these kind of old timey Hollywood theatrical performers. All right. All right cool. I wish I was artistic. Okay. So you're very close, uh, different way. Uh, I've got another thing to show. So this is oh, like yeah, the sorry. This is like the modern approach to hand-drawn animation where you're drawing on a computer tablet and instead of flipping paper, you can jump to any frame, change anything at any time. You don't have to film it, you know, with a camera because it already exists on the computer. So you can just save it out and it's already moving. So computer animation, even when it's hand-drawn, cuts out a lot of middle processes. The other aspect to this film that I'm... Um, involved with is 3D computer animation. So it's about trains, it's brave locomotive. Mm. Uh, and I joked uh, recently that instead of making a model train set here in my garage, I'm just making an animated film about trains that takes advantage of my skill set as an animator. Sure. But uh, 3D computer animation is great because you can make it look 2D, you can make it look like a flat image, but you have the benefit of the computer storing all this information that you don't have to keep drawing over and over again. So this is a character in the film called Samson. He's a giant 1920s style locomotive. And you create this rig and it's basically like a toy that you can play with on the computer. And we were speaking about video games earlier. This is how video game technology is done. You animate an instance, but you can toggle around it and see it playing back in real time, almost like a three-dimensional film. Oh, I don't think we're seeing this. Yeah, no, we're seeing we old, can't see Samson yet. Character. Can't see oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I want to see I'm Samson. I wish Okay, yeah, you can cut that out and I'll, I'll just say Now, now while, while we're waiting for Samson, so you have a, a baby on the way and you know it's going to be a little boy, correct? I do, yeah. I, I When I was really little, like four or five years old, I loved trains, trucks, airplanes, anything that was, was moving. And I think part of the fact that I'm revisiting and finishing this film now is in anticipation of having a son. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll want him to see it and enjoy it. And Like you're, you've got to be the greatest dad going. You make <laughs> animation about trains and stuff like that for the little kids. But I know this much about children. There's a small chance he won't be interested in any of this. <laughs> yeah. And there might be. He probably will. Probably will. But how much of a disappointment will he be if that is the case? <laughs> just just like, you know, like when you see like athletes and they're like the top basketball players and then their son doesn't play at all and they're like, no, he's not interested. You know what I mean? Like you can always tell, oh, no, yeah. no, no, he's got his own things that he's into. Um, so how much are you going to push this on your kid? And do <laughs> well, my, my wife went to school for animation and she's a fashion designer. And I loved animation since I was a kid and grew up wanting to do it. And now I do it. But if he's interested in sports or being a lawyer or being an actor or an accountant or whatever. That's all the jobs in the world. You yeah. Named all of them. yeah, it's it's really fine. I mean, I think animation is it's a lot of fun, but it's not a way to make big money like a doctor or a lawyer or like a like a celebrity actor. 
it's it's more of a middle class profession, I would say, financially, like maybe upper middle class. Really, and it's they, they, the Disney don't pay you the big bucks for doing this. No, like, they 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 pay very well. It's okay. a very good upper middle class job. Okay. You know, I should I should clarify that. <laughs> but I mean, and they have a good bonus structure and everything, and the directors do really well. So there's opportunity to kind of touch some of that Hollywood. You know, it, potential. It, it must piss you off that at things like Comic Con, the people who do the fucking voices, they're lining around the corner to fucking get their <laughs> autograph on a drawing that you have fucking done, right? Like, like you know, so like Kristen Bell does the voice in Frozen. She was probably in the studio for a day, and she gets all the credit, all the credit. You were working on this thing for fucking years. <laughs> just, just, it doesn't. It doesn't make me mad though. I mean, it's kind of like. They're sort of the the real estate investment, and then we're the the architectural crew that has to then build on that real estate. I mean, it's there. There's a lot to it. I mean, people see movies for all kinds of reasons, either brand or celebrity, or it's a musical and it looks expensive, so I want to see it. There's so many reasons people go see these movies, and the the five or six individual animators on a team of 800 are probably not one of them. So you have to kind of be okay with that because that's not really what the job's about. But um, for the people who want it to be about that, yeah, they're probably pretty angry. So, so okay, so I look, I, I I was I was in an animated film, hasn't come out yet, but um, I know that, and probably most people at home know this. Uh, the voice is done first, right, and then you yeah. animate over the top of the voice. Now, when you have a character in something like Frozen or whatever. And you already have like you've read the script and the character's meant to be this plucky blah 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 blah. Have you ever and you don't have to say any names, have you ever had a voice come through where you're like, well, that's not how I imagined it at all? Or it's a little uh, you know, lower energy than you thought it might be, or anything like that? Or 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 and on, on the flip side, have you ever had uh, voices come in where you're like, that has just made the character. I wasn't even interested in this character until I heard the voice. Yes. Uh I'll answer the latter part of the question first. I wasn't interested in Olaf as a character in Frozen until he was Josh Gad. Josh Gad. Oh, boy. <laughs> Josh Gad no, no, made not, that. He made not. that character. He yeah. made that character. That's good. But, I mean, he was only, um, like, kind of temp, and he was originally played as a more sarcastic kind of character, and then when they made him kind of more like a a, a man-child, mm. it, something about it worked in a way that I was like, okay, that people are going to love that character. Yeah, he was very good at. I'm a huge fan of Josh. Oh, I'm not going to get into that. But I, 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 <laughs> did I, wait, did I? Did I? Did I? No, no. no he just no. thinks I he just, sings too much. Like he has to sing in every fucking film. <laughs> he has to find a way to sing in every movie. All right, move on. <laughs> fucking, move on. there wasn't a need for Pixel to have a song. Move on. Oh, I Move haven't. On. I haven't seen it. He sings in that too. Any, anything. <laughs> Any, anything. Anything. He could be playing Lee Harvey Oswald in the fucking assassination of Kennedy, and he'd find the I bought my gun on a mailing order. Like he'd fucking figure out a way oh, yeah. to wedge a song in. Yeah, good retention of yeah. knowledge from the gun episode. Yeah. Yeah, that we had on the podcast. Good job. Um, he, he he probably is friends with more people who are animators at Disney than any voice actor who's worked there. He was nice. very very engaged. Of course, yeah. because he, he wants to gain weight so he doesn't have to be on screen anymore. He has to go down now. I'm only teasing. Now, did you ever hear did you ever hear the story about um so Mike Myers originally voiced Shrek and then he voiced it and I believe half the whole movie was animated and then he came back and went, I've decided I want Shrek to be Scottish. And they didn't tell him that half of it was made and they were like, Are you sure? And he Michael and Michael's like, oh, I'm positive. He's gotta <laughs> have a Scottish that. accent. Uh question. How much would that fuck you off? Uh, if I was the producer and a lot of it was already animated, I would probably not be happy about it. If I was the animator and I'd only animated maybe a few scenes, I'd be okay with it. Because all, but, also before that, that only voiced half of the film had already been voiced by Chris Farley. But Chris right. Fa Chris Farley had died, oh, so they'd already started working on Chris Farley stuff. So that film is just like, so one guy fucking dies, this guy wants to be fucking Scottish. <laughs> Nightmare. Yeah, and the Chris Farley recordings are from like four or five years before it came out in 2001. So it's like mid-late 90s. Mm. They had a whole storybook version of the movie with Chris Farley. Yeah. Uh, have I, they, have I they ever released 
any of that? I don't think he finished the recording, so they would have made the movie with him because it would have made probably it would have been a bigger news story to have a I Chris mean, But I, I feel like they'd have some takes. It recorded. went through a lot of story changes too. I mean, animated movies is kind of like sometimes the way these movies turn out, they they play differently as storybook or animation than they are on the page. And then these movies have to check so many boxes, right? Either whether it's merchandise or demographics or whatever it might be, they, they almost happen so slowly that it's easier to pick them apart in real time. Do you, right? li- do you know like actors, okay, so everyone, everyone could agree that Eddie Murphy seems to be dynamite in these films from being in Mulan and then being the donkey and all that type of stuff. And they, I've heard that he just bashes these films out and he just gives them so many different takes, so many different options. Have you ever had like a pitch meeting where they've come in and they go, and hey, we're going to use this actor? And you're like, what? Like, like Zac Efron. He doesn't have an interesting voice. Has Zac Efron done one? I'd like to pitch against that. Probably. <laughs> no, that. I, well, so I, I often feel sorry for the, when I was a kid, the voices of the actors and the thing, they were voice actors. They were specially people. You had your Mel Brooks and even like, who's the guy who did the beast in Beauty and the Beast? You don't know who that is. It was some actor or whatever. And now it's just like the most famous person we can get rather than the most interesting voice. I've always thought that I should be in every Australian one as a crocodile. Why am I? Are you, well, close your, <laughs> you can ask him the question, why am I not? Close your eyes right now. I actually almost was a crocodile in a DreamWorks one that Tim Mitchin was making but the, right. about a Bilby, the movie never went ahead. But anyway, close your eyes. Okay. Tell me if this doesn't sound like a crocodile right now. That's a crocodile's voice. you got a the crocodile. You can picture his eyes opening up and then he's like, all right, what are you up to? All right, now get mad. Ah, oh, you bloody get off me land, you fucking piece of shit. A lot of swearing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. That crocodiles don't live on land. Yeah, I live near the swamp, you cunt. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, that was it. That Look was it. The crocodile. For any crocodile animation coming out, you know where to find me. <laughs> okay, Andrew. Uh <laughs> so this is the end of the podcast. We ask our guests to give us a dinner party fact, something like obscure, interesting that the fact that uh, I was never a crocodile is pretty surprising to anyone. <laughs> our guests can use to impress friends or, you know, coworkers. My name's Snappy. Well, <laughs> well, I actually saw something today uh, that fresh. That was very fascinating to me. So scientists have inserted a GIF or GIF, if you like, which is usually an image that people share with each other as a meme, little animated image, into the DNA of living bacteria. So we're one step closer to embedding data into our own skin. So they're basically using DNA as a hard drive to, to, to store a very small Image file. And is that gif of Robert Downey Jr. rolling his eyes? Like, isn't that one? <laughs> it's actually a gif of uh, a man riding a horse that was photographed by Edward Moybridge in the 1870s. Wow, so the very first with it. Yeah, God, yeah. We've, we've gone through, we've gone through all this trouble to get technology. Put a put a funny in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the scientists the scientists were again, waxing nostalgic about the history of the moving image, so they wanted to put that into the first DNA data storage. Wow. Yeah. What does that mean for us? Well, that was a good podcast, Yeah, man. I want to say again, Andrew Chesworth, uh, his po- uh, his website is andrewchesworth.com. His last name is C-H-E-S, just one S W O R T H. And you can find links to his Instagram and other, I just followed you on there, a lot of cool animation things, stuff on there. Um, and also don't forget his Patreon uh, that he showed us a little bit of there. Um, the brave locomotive, you can, they can contribute to that, right? On Patreon or that. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. right. And it, we're scheduled to wrap in September of this year, and then we'll probably do a few festivals and maybe release it online either end of the year or early next year. Oh, we'll plug that when it comes out yeah, as for well. Sure. Right, also, oh, awesome. we Thank have you. our Patreon and come and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come and see. Do you, you want to see the, the, the Samson model? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, didn't get, yeah. we didn't get to see that. Sorry. And cut that back in. So can you see this 3d model here? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, because obviously trains are very complicated to animate, you don't want to draw all this detail by hand. I made a 3D model in Maya that's supposed to look kind of like a flat two dimensional image. And the final render will have like sort of line work on it, sort of like the Iron Giant, if you've ever seen that. Movie. Oh, I love the Iron Giant. Yeah. It's the same exact technology. In fact, the same software that the Iron Giant was made in. So, this train is kind of an Iron Giant himself. But, uh, mentioning that video game animation is sort of like instance animation that you can toggle around in real time, almost like you're watching a playback of a virtual puppet without having to, to move it. So we've got this rig, 
you know, he's, he's chugging along here and I can look at him from any angle. Oh. And this is how you'd create animation for a video game. But this is also the same program we use to create Frozen as well. Uh, and then if I turn on these controls here, he actually does have a rig. So you can sort of move him around. Oh. I can angle him. That's a little bit slow here. One moment. Yeah. Sometimes this, this program kind of chugs when I'm screen sharing. But yeah, you can kind of angle him. You know, he's probably never going to be at that severe of an angle, but you can wow. do that. Or you can grab his his head and kind of give him a little look to the side there. Oh, his, right. So wow. you, don't actually have, you don't have to animate that separately. That'll just happen. Yeah. And then you can take his big glowing eyes and kind of have him look down, give you... Have Did you, you uh, have you backed this up on a hard drive? <laughs> yes, I yes. actually have this all backed up on uh, good because it would be sad to lose this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was quite a bit of work. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and then he's got these these coaches back here, and the coaches are they're sort of like um, slightly alive. You know, they're not quite as alive as he is, but they can kind of like kind of look around and wow. sort of be aware of their surroundings. So that's kind of fun. Don't, I mean, don't, again, don't ruin the movie, but there isn't a big train crash in there, is there? Everyone's like, oh, okay, don't tell yeah, me. Don't I, don't, tell I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. You gonna... Well, I mean, what would you want to see in a cartoon about trains? It's probably in here somewhere. <laughs> I'd like I'd like to see uh, Thomas get his uh, fucking comeuppance. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the fuck is Okay, Thomas the Tank Engine lives on a fucking island. Why does it have such intricate fucking railroad systems? <laughs> Railroads are for your big places. They live on a little tiny island. Who's like, oh, we got to ship all this stuff to the other side of the pissy little fucking island? You can do it with trucks, people. <laughs> I love that you have a rant for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Important thing. I, yeah. I remember wondering that as a kid, too. Like, wait, how big is that island? I wondered I that as an adult. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the island of Lilliput or something? I don't know. Lilliput? Uh, Sodor. So, I so, remember... Sodor, yeah. Jesus. I remember I told, I I told the story to a friend yesterday. I had the little, you know, um, die cast metal Thomas toys when I was like three, four years old. Mm. Before I was old enough to watch the the shorts and understand them, I just knew I liked the train, but I didn't know why it had this weird face on it. And I would try to like take off the plastic face. Mm. And then when I watched the films, I was like, oh, okay, it's, it's supposed like, to be there. I, <laughs> it's supposed I, to be there. But I, watching the films, you know, they would kind of stage it in a way where it looks like these things are going to like look at you and eat you. They're like monsters. And so I wanted to get some of that feeling into this, that monster feel that feels a little bit unintentional in Thomas. It's, it's intentional here. All right. So who is the voice of Ringo Starr, America? Of oh, oh, Ringo Starr. There you go. This is the answer. Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr. Did it. Ringo Starr. Who, who did it in America? Ringo Starr. Wait. George Carlin did it in America. Yeah, it was Carlin. That's what, right. The, Car the, Carlin the voice did of the voice. Thomas? Oh. Now, the big difference is, so he was like, all right there, Thomas, time to pull into the station. Oh no, the fuck controller like that, right? And so I, perfect, over, yeah. over here, you just called him the controller. You didn't want to call him the fat controller because he just looked like every other American. <laughs> <laughs> the American controller. Perfect. All right. So I hope I've upset some folk. Uh, <laughs> thanks for being on the podcast, Andrew. We really appreciate it. that. Was very informative. I think we one of our longest podcasts ever. Yeah. We were talking we, and talking there. Yeah. Um, so uh, to our advertisers, pay double. <laughs> Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, you know, you know that Oswald the Rabbit was your first animated thing, go, I don't know about that, and then walk away. You go, it's Felix the cat, you dumb cunt. <laughs> Good night, Australia. <laughs> <laughs>